Today, I'm gonna to show you three of the most insane masking transitions in the game. And yes, you can do all of this in the free version of Resolve. So let's jump into it. Let's look at the zoom through transition. First thing we're gonna do is just stabilize this footage. So come into stabilize, come into translation and just click stabilize. Now we can play through and that movement's just a lot smoother. And now we're just gonna do some speed ramping. So come into retime controls. I'm gonna come forward two or three seconds and then come into this drop down arrow and add speed point. And then we're gonna come through basically to where the window is pretty much out of frame and then add another speed point. And then we're just gonna drag this last point right in. And then if we just come up into our keyframes, come down to the speed and we wanna come into this spline editor. Gonna highlight all of our spaces and just ease in and out. And then on this first point, drag it all the way up. Same on this next one. And then on the last point as well. Now escape to go back. Now our speed ramp should be a whole lot smoother. So we can just get out of our retime controls and we can cut this about here. And we're just gonna unlink them and delete the audio as well, cause we don't need that. And then we're gonna re-stabilize this footage again. So into translation and just hit stabilize just to make that move just a little bit smoother. And then just come into the fusion page. In the fusion page, you just wanna add a B spline. And then we're just gonna mask out this window and we wanna use as few points as possible. And we use as little points as possible to make the tracking easier. Then we're gonna come forward to where we can just see the whole window. And then we're just gonna resize all of these points. And now we just basically we just want to come through and go every say five or 10 frames through the whole video and just fix up all those points. So it's perfectly tracked to that window throughout this whole clip. And then eventually when we get to the end, the mask won't even be visible anymore. And this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because the movement's so quick and we're going to add in some blur and stuff, but try and get it as close as possible. And now that you've got the rotoscoping all done, come back into the edit page, hold alt and click and drag to duplicate that clip and come into the top clip, back into the fusion page, click on the spline and then just invert the mask. Then back on the edit page, highlight both clips, right click and new fusion clip. So then we can just come back into the fusion page. We can delete the background and these two merge nodes. And then we're gonna grab a background node, plug that into the media out and turn it down to alpha. Then we can merge over first the media in one and then on top of that, the media in two. So now we can come through to about frame 40 under our media in one, hit shift space and put in a transform node. Add a keyframe on the center, come forward about 35, 40 frames, and then add another keyframe and just drag this all the way down. We come into the spline tab, select everything, right click, we go to ease and in cubic. And we're just gonna play around with this a little bit just to get the timing right. So we can maybe bring it forward, maybe three or four frames, and then maybe shorten it up a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. Then in our transform node, come into settings and just turn on motion blur and turn the quality all the way up to 10. That is perfect. And then back on the edit page, we're gonna to come to the spot where the speed ramping starts, hold alt and drag up to duplicate and just shorten this clip up just until it's out of the screen. And then on top of this clip, we're gonna come into the effects tab and we're gonna type in zoom. We want the zoom blur, just place that on top. Zoom in here a little bit. I'm just going to add a little fade in. And then the final thing we have to do is just put some footage underneath. And that is how you do the zoom through transition. Now let's make this freeze frame transition. First, we're going to drag on our background footage and then the footage we're going to transition to. I'm going to turn off this top one for the moment, come to a spot where we feel like we want to do the transition, which is about here. And then we're going to find a spot that we want to transition to. So we're just going to add a marker right here, just so we know where we're at. And we're going to zoom in on this, create a new compound clip, just so it's locked in like that. And we want to be like, say like there. From here, we're going to duplicate it. And then on this top one, right click, change clip speed, and then freeze frame. So we can turn this bottom one off for the moment. And then on our frozen clip, just come into the fusion page. Now in the fusion page, just going to grab a B spline and we're just going to mask out our subject. 
Now we can just plug our base blind into the media in one. Now we're just gonna disconnect the media in one from the media out, drag this up here and just add in a background node and just drop that in and just turn it to alpha. And we can merge our media in one back over the top. And then we're gonna grab another background node and merge that over the top and copy and paste this base blind and plug it into the background node. And we're just gonna turn solid off and bring up the border width to like 0.005. And then we're gonna change the color of this to whatever you want. We're gonna go with like a cyan. So on frame zero, we're gonna put a keyframe on the position and the length of our base blind. We're gonna come forward 30 frames and put another keyframe on the position and the length. We're gonna bring the length down to 0.2 and then we're gonna put the position at 1.5. And then on this frame, we're just gonna bring our position up to just so the line is just out of frame. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's about 1.8 will do. And we're just gonna shorten the length up to about maybe 0.18. And then on frame zero, we just bring the length down to zero. Then back on frame 30, we're actually gonna change this, the position to 0.8. And under our merge node, press shift space and type in transform. We're gonna put keyframes on the center and the size on frame zero. And if we go to frame like 23, three or 24 keyframes on the center and the size, and then on frame 30, same thing. So on frame zero, we can bring the size down to just to like 0.9 and just drag our person all the way out of screen. And then on frame 23, bring our size up to like 1.1-ish and just bring the center up a little bit. And then on frame 30, it goes back right into position. So now, in our spline tab, for the motion of the character going up, just select these two points, right click, ease and out cubic. And then on our out points, highlight these two, right click, ease and in cubic. So now we get this. And then the final thing we just need to add, under our background node, shift space and type in X glow. And then we can just change the color of our X glow to cyan. This just makes that animated line look 10 times better. And then on our transform node, let's come into settings and turn on motion blur. Turn the quality all the way up to 10. And we can come just to frame 30. Back in the edit page, we can just cut our top clip all the way down just so it's 30 frames. Turn our bottom clip back on and just add it in just in front. Then we're just gonna add like a base shake effect to really tie these two clips together. So we're just gonna cut like five frames and add in a base shake. And then just play around with your shake settings and the length of that clip till you get what you want. And that is the freeze frame transition. Now, before we head over to my favorite transition of them all, make sure to head over to samuelj.store to grab some of the best packs in the game. And if you use the promo code that's on screen right now, you can get 20% off all packs on the site. While you're there, make sure to become a free member because there's a lot of free downloads that you can take full advantage of. Now, let's have a look at this scene grow transition. First, we're just gonna drag in our clip and we want it to be about 45 frames. Let me just cut this right down to 45. And then we're just gonna duplicate this clip, turn the bottom one off and create a new compound clip on the top and then come into the Fusion page. This transition takes quite a bit of rotoscoping, so we're just gonna speed right through it. We're gonna disconnect uh, media one, put in a background node, connect it up to the media out, and turn it down to alpha. And we can merge over our first clip. And we're gonna put this right at the end. Now we can just add in a polygon. Starting on frame zero, we basically wanna build this scene forwards to backwards if that makes sense. Our first one to come up is gonna be this brick building. So starting off at the top corner, we're just gonna mask out this building and it does not have to be perfect. And we just wanna use as little points as possible. So that is our first building. And then we're gonna copy our media one, paste it behind, plug it in, and then we grab another polygon. So our next building to come up is gonna be this one here on the right this big glass building. Remember, don't worry about this being perfect. There's gonna be so much motion blur that it really doesn't matter. So you can see now that we're growing our scene. Our next building is gonna be this tall one here. And the buildings get easier and easier to mask out as you move along because the buildings in front of them are gonna hide those masks. 
So this looks like it's sort of shitty, but you can see if we plug this in, you can't even tell because this building on the right, this brick building is gonna come up first and it's gonna hide all of that bad masking that is created by this polygon. You're not even gonna see it. So we're just gonna keep going through and masking out our whole city. Now that we've got all of our city masked out, we need to track all of these masks. And that is just more manual rotoscoping. So we're just gonna disconnect everything apart from our very first or last node and just disconnect the polygon. We're gonna come forward, let's say 20 frames and just readjust the mask and then come forward, let's say another 20 and just keep replacing this mask. And again, this does not need to be perfect. There's just so much motion blur and it happens so quick that you're not even gonna notice any of the little imperfections. And that is our first building tracked. Now just go ahead and do that for the rest of the buildings. So now that we've got all of our buildings all masked out and tracked, let's animate this. So we just drop a transform node onto this last node tree. So on frame zero, we just put a keyframe on the center come forward 20 frames and then add another keyframe. Come back to frame zero and just pull this all the way down, just like that. And then we're gonna copy and paste this transform node onto the one before it. And then come into the keyframe tab and just move this forward three frames. And we're just gonna continue doing this for all of our other nodes. And then we'll sort out the timing in a bit. So now we have the starters of our animation, but it's looking sort of shitty. So we've got to fix up the timing a bit. So on our very first group of nodes, this is our road section. We want this to sort of follow all of the buildings in, not come in after all of them. So we're going to come back into the keyframes and move this back to frame zero and stretch it out to maybe frame 25. And then we're just going to grab this second to last node tree, hold shift and drag and just drag it to the very start. So it's behind everything. Okay, now I think that's looking pretty good, but we just got to sort out the timing a bit in our spline tab. So on these first five nodes, just highlight all the transform nodes, come to spline, tick all of our transform nodes, make sure you can see everything, hit command A and then ease and in cubic. Now on our road section, we're just gonna control A, hit S and then T to bring up our ease in and ease out settings. We're just gonna drag our front one pretty much all the way up and our back one to about there. So with our road, let's just move this back, say 10 frames. And then on our road, we want this to be sort of like zooming in. So we're gonna to come to frame 35, put a keyframe on the size, come back to frame 10 and just drag this all the way up to like five. You basically just wanna keep messing around with all of the keyframes until you get them perfect. And if you wanna see exactly how all the keyframes and everything is done. Once again, I'm giving away the full project file on my website. All you gotta do is sign up as a free member and you get access to all my free downloads. And then last off in the Fusion tab, just turn on Motion Blur for all of your transform nodes. Now finally, back in the edit page, grab an adjustment layer, make it really short, like two frames, and then add it in in a place as soon as a building reaches its full extension. And then we're just gonna add in another shake and copy and paste them in wherever a building hits the top. They'll end up being about one frame apart. Now we can just turn our bottom clip back on and stretch it out and then just cut the start to where our animation ends. Finally, just layer under a clip that we're gonna transfer from and that is our scene grow transition. Again, if you want this whole project file with all three transitions in it, so you can do a full deep dive, head over to samuelj.store and grab yourself that project file right now. It's completely free. All you gotta do is become a member. And while you're at it, if you wanna make better subtitles, better effects, or some better sound design, grab yourself a pack today.